Hello and welcome to another edition of America Unveiled. Today we are at the home and animal sanctuary of David and Mandy Tidwell, Hooves Marching for Mercy. David, Mandy, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate you inviting us out here and showing us around your sanctuary. Thank you for coming. Thank you guys for being here. Now uh, you formed this uh, together, right? We did, we did. Um, back in 2015 is when we became officially Hooves Marching for Mercy, but we've been doing this since 2013. Right. Now usually people start this, uh, similar things like this, sanctuaries for a personal reason. What was your reason for starting this laudable sanctuary? <laughs> <laughs> we um, got our very first pig uh -huh. And um, his name was Darwin, right. and he was our journey maker. He uh, he was a handful. He was a handful. <laughs> he was a handful. He showed us what true pig ownership meant and was all about, and the challenges that went with it. Um, now, was he a rescue pig? He was our um, he was a rescue. Um, he was a week old. He had pneumonia, and I was a vet tech, and I thought certainly. I could take care of this one week old with pneumonia being taken away from us. How did that work out for you? Uh, three days in, he had his first meltdown. meltdown I think yeah. I All made right. it to five days before yep. I had my meltdown. Right. Closest thing to a human baby that we had experienced with an animal. Right. Um, so. Yeah, it was a situation in the car where my boss was calling me mm -hmm. and Darwin was screaming and she was trying to feed the animal and I went. And the milk went everywhere, yeah, it just exploded. Yeah, yeah, and between the three the three things, I said, you know, my boss is least threatening and I answered the phone. You know? Which did not make me very happy with a squealing pig. Now, you mentioned that, I mean, neither of you come from agricultural backgrounds, did no. you? No, no, I actually came from a, a background of hunters and people that, you know, did not were not necessarily animal rescuers, right. um, but they, they they taught me to appreciate animals. Right. They taught me that you know to love them. To you know if you took them on, that was quite a responsibility. So right. that was something they did instill in us. Mm -hmm. But no, no, no agriculture background at all. I mean, it, you know, it's very common to see. Um, cat, dog, even ferrets, you know, and animal sanctuary. That's where I started rescue. was cat rescue. But to see one that deals with farm animals, I mean, it's very rare, it's very unusual, but I think it's a wonderful thing because farm animals are very much maligned when their usefulness expires. Yes. And, and people are getting them as pets these days. Oh, right. And not knowing what they're getting into. You know that, you know, that horse live 30 to, to 45 years and a lot of little girls want a pony on their 16th birthday and then they get tired of it a year later and then exactly. nobody wants it exactly. anymore exactly. and it's got most of his life left exactly. um, these pot-bellied pigs I feel sorry for them yes because they, people get them as a pet the the novelty wears off they're not fed taught how to be fed correctly there are so many things that go wrong that then make these pigs have outbursts, behavior problems, you know. The same thing as a human has as a human, when it's when ill treated. It's being, it, ill treated, exactly. So when they're being starved and they act out, there's a reason, but people don't know because they've bought into this myth and been deceived as right. to how to take care right. of this animal. And then they, they feel deceived and they don't know what to do and then everybody's and they don't know what they're getting. Yeah, and sometimes they, they listen to the breeders. They don't feed the animal correctly. Uh, they think it's a dog in a pig costume, yes. right? Which is yes. not. Um, and then sometimes they're not even pot belly pigs. Uh, right. They're they're they're, right. they're full they're... fledged farm pigs or feral pigs. Right. And then people are really shocked when they suddenly have something that was supposed to be five six hundred thirty five pounds, and they're five six hundred, eight hundred, or even larger. Right. right. Well, that's part of. Them. That one of many reasons that I wanted to, to feature you on America Unveiled is, as I say, one of the many reasons is just public education. If people are aware of this, maybe they won't take on 
just responsibility or burden, ever how you wish to look at it. If we can stress to people that pot belly pigs, they are a 20 to 25 year commitment. Um, shortened is 15 years. Um, they are as intelligent as a five-year-old child. Mm -hmm. If pigs can be taught to play video games, think of all the things. I know it sounds amazing, but they can be, so we're ruining another generation of <laughs> another species, um, teaching them to play video games. But you know, we there's so much that people don't realize that go into this animal that they're so caught off guard and they don't do their research or they misunderstand or think somebody's just mm -hmm. over exaggerating that this, this animal's as smart as a five-year-old child. And then when they can open all their cupboards and their refrigerators mm -hmm. and figure out by watching them open the door how to get out the house, right. they then quickly learn that, oh, this is as smart as a five-year-old child and what have I done? Right. Um, so again, these things that they have to learn um, that, that the education just needs to be made more readily available um, and also that they are never going to be smaller than 75 pounds not healthy right not healthy and yeah, they I've, can I've be seen, up to 200 250 pounds. i've seen some people that put them on special diets just to keep them small and, it and that's abuse does. it, it, it is know, abuse it's, it's, and we had one just recently her name was patsy she was literally She's now 35 pounds at four years old. Wow. And at the animal control, they didn't think she was going to make it when they first brought her in. And she's gained 15 pounds. She's that tiny because she was probably indoors and also starved. Yes. It's sad. I mean, I hate to see it. And having a sanctuary and obtaining rescue animals like this, I'm sure you've seen the worst of the worst and things that you don't even want to repeat. We um, have a couple you'll meet. Yeah, we, we've seen a lot of abuse and you know, as we talk about some of their stories. And some of them physically, visually, it'll be obvious too right. when you meet them. Right. But, uh, and, and the thing is, is they don't, they're like us, they don't forget. Correct. So if somebody abuses them, they have long-term memory, right. so they remember that. Right. That's and, the other thing, yeah. pigs have long-term memory. They Lots have of animals memory, do, and actually. they have memory recall. So you could trigger something in them and not even know it. A scent could trigger off mm -hmm. an episode. Pigs are one of the most, um, they suffer from PTSD mm -hmm. horribly. And people don't realize, so a, the pig could be acting perfectly fine one moment, just like people. Mm -hmm. And the next thing, something sets them off mm -hmm. and they're going nuts and people don't understand. And so we have some of those kind of animals here that have had trauma that, you know, one minute they're fine and they're mm -hmm. normally perfectly normal and fine. Yeah, that's what and I, they'll I, have a moment where they lash out or act up or start to, and you can immediately correct if you're watching, um, but where they just think they have to act in an old manner versus the safe manner. Yeah, yeah. I've um, worked with animals most of my life, mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, they have the same psychological makeup as humans, and, and, and I even hate comparing animals to humans because Really, well, that, that's saying that we're a higher species than them. Yes. I have never believed that. Yes. They have the same emotions, the same feelings. I don't emotions, care, I don't so care much if it's an earwig or, 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 or a human of high breeding. It's the same energy. Mm -hmm. And that's what you feel when you work with these yes. disabled yes. Um, animals. Mm -hmm. And I was recently one of the other episodes we did, we had disabled children uh, with, with autism or handicapped or various things, Down syndrome. And over a period of days or weeks, they start communicating with this horse it was. Mm -hmm. And they actually had a communication between them. They, and that you could see, we actually have it on camera. Even always we, we filmed it, it's amazing. Yeah. and. If people would just realize that and stop thinking animals are a subspecies. Yes. 
and hopefully. learn to relate with them and interact with them and watch them. One of our favorite things to do here is just sit and watch them be who they are. Right. And experience the world around them. Their own unique personality. Yes, and, and they will show off who they are. Yeah. So that's one of the great joys that we get to experience here and share with others. We have people that volunteer and um, we have a uh, former Marine's wife that comes here and she brings uh, two of her neighbor children um, with her and they come volunteer. But you will find her every time at some point right. where she is laying out in the middle of that driveway toward the <laughs> barn and she is surrounded by pigs and she's just laying there experiencing them. Right. and all their beauty and they are napping with her they you're not going to get any of them up for any time soon right. but um they are just it, it's it gives us such joy for other people to come and experience and have that real animal encounter that's what's important to us here is that the animals need the people the people need the animals they now, have to go together now how do you obtain or how have you obtained most of the animals that you have here, just from various situations. Most of them have come from animal controls. Um, the, the pigs are becoming more and more seen in animal controls, just like dogs and cats. Um, right now, I've turned four to five animal control pigs away just this week. I had no because idea it had gotten to that room. level. It has gotten to that well, level. It's, 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 it's overbreeding just like with dogs. You know, a good example is pit bulls mm -hmm. are extremely popular right now. And we, we toured one of the local uh, animal control facilities. Like they have this nice new facility, you know. Um, but the thing that struck me and broke my heart was when we walked by the, the room where all the, it's a huge room where all the dogs are housed and they got their individual little pens. But that first row was just pit bull, pit bull, pit bull, pit bull, pit bull, pit bull, pit bull. And we See, at this point in my life, I can't even we subject myself to that. Yeah. We were, it yeah. was hard. It was hard. Yeah. But we were there picking up two piglets that yeah. had one had been attacked by a dog. Yeah. And they were six weeks old. They had to get out of animal control. Yeah. So we had to step in and help. Now, I mean, you're a 501c3 yes. organization. Yes. So you're nonprofit. Yes. And so you operate mainly on the goodwill of others and donations yes. and is is that able to sustain what you're doing um, presently right now uh we 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 uh probably support us at least half of the way yeah we're about we're us. about we funded about 50 percent ourselves wow. yeah yeah right at the moment but we are getting there um people are starting to take notice of us um we're starting to reach the right people the right audience um, well, if you can tell everybody now how they may donate or if they wish to volunteer. Um, they can contact us via um, our website, www.hoovesmarchingformercy.org, or um, my email is mthmfm at gmail.com, mm -hmm. and you can contact me, Mandy. Um, about how to volunteer or donate, um, but we'll put everything on the credits of the show. So and we're on Facebook it. as well. Exactly. So just look for Hooves Marching for Mercy on Facebook. It's a, I think it's a closed group, so you have no. to. No, it's open group. Okay, yes. so you can you can find us there as well. So the people. Some people I mean, people do need to know how how they can help because yeah. yeah. there's a lot of people out there that would help and would yes. donate, mm -hmm. but then they don't know you're here. Yes. And we always exactly. encourage people, you know, one of the things we remind people is to say, share our Facebook page with your friends. Uh, share our website with your friends because each, each of us has our own network, right? And so if I reach out to 10 people and then they reach out to all the people they know, or they, their network of close friends, you know, we've now reached out to 100 people suddenly, right? right? So we always encourage people, hey, maybe you can't donate right now. You can't support us financially if you'd like to just come and spend time with the animals. I mean, come volunteer. volunteer help. Volunteering That's volunteer is help. huge. I'm, We've been able, we, we get so much extra done around here. <laughs> when we have volunteers. And that's just as important as money. It, it, Very it, much and so. the socialization for so. the animals, when people are here petting the animals and loving on the animals, the animals do so much better. We, we have two missions. So mm -hmm. we have the mission of the animals, but we also, our goal is to eventually one day house homeless veterans here with the animals. 
to me, it's very cyclical. Mm -hmm. um, the animals will help the veterans, the veterans will help the animals. Currently, right now, because we um, do not own the property, we're hoping to um, purchase it. We are working on kicking off a fundraiser to purchase it. Um, it's going to cost $260,000, but that is our goal to raise. Um, they have said they would sell us the property. So we are working towards that. Once we own the property, we'd like to turn the upstairs of the barn and the tack room into places where we can house homeless veterans and, and get them, those that want to come in off the street or are in a halfway program already and are ready to move on to another stage where they can come here and help refine their sense of purpose. Well, it's a very magnanimous and laudable thing you're doing all the way around. I mean, you're a very yes, heartfelt people person, aren't you? And so are you, David. I mean, you wouldn't be doing this if you both weren't. And I think if more people on this sense. earth were like you two, uh, we wouldn't have all these wars and, and all this strife that we have here. I think it's wonderful. Well, because you stay busy. You're too bit yeah. tired. You're working yeah. all the yeah. time. You're too tired to be worried about anything else in life. You're, you're dealing with the animals and you're loving them. And by the end of your day, you're just tired. I mean, because all, all, I mean, you were talking about the disabled veterans. Mm -hmm. That's what you have here in the animals. Yes disabled veterans of a situation. Of a situation, exactly. Yeah. And they can relate to each other. We've watched it happen. Um, we have two pigs with veterans already mm -hmm. um, that um, are in foster home, have been in foster home for a long time and probably never coming back to us. But they, they live with two veterans that, you know, um, one of them suffers from PTSD. Right. Um, and so they help him. Um, we we adopt out to veterans and military for free, as we hope our animals can help them. Um, we recently adopted out a peacock. <laughs> of all animals, it was a peacock, um, but we were able to adopt it out to a military family. And you know, I would almost believe that if you have a disabled person and a disabled animal, they will develop a closer bond and kinship than, say, you with the same animal. Well, you guys will meet Willie, and he is my service pig. Yeah. Um, he and I have bonded since he came to the sanctuary over many things, and since my time on hospice um, and through my illness, um, he has been right there, and he also has congestive heart failure. Does he really? So he and I, I think we are so in tune to one another. Right. Um, that we just have that special, there's that special connection that we just know when. Closer than you needs. probably had with family members. Yes, yeah. yes. Because I've had, a, I've had closer me. relationships with my animals than I have with most of my relatives. Right. Willie yeah. can <laughs> soothe me quicker sometimes than anything else can. He can also help me release emotion quicker than most anything can. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he's, he's a special boy. Yeah. Well, David, Mandy, if you don't mind, let's uh, walk around and see some of the animals let's and, go meet some and folks. interview yeah. some of them. Let's go meet yes, some absolutely. Guys. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, friends, you oh. slipped. You, you made me think you had a limp, buddy. <laughs> I thought you had a limp. Hey, friends. Hey. What's my name? What's your name? Oh, God. Hi, Susanna. Susanna came from animal control. That's our Marvin with the chickens. Marvin and the chickens like each other a lot. This is Rachel. She came with her mom, Darlene. We believe it's her mom. Um, and they were released. They came from Texas. They were released from a hoarding case and people were called out to hunt them. And Darlene survived with Rachel and three of Darlene's babies. Um, Rachel and Darlene came to our sanctuary while the babies went to another sanctuary. Um, Rachel came and she actually was pregnant. Um, she went into preterm pre labor. Um, we uh, lost all the babies in a C-section, unfortunately. Um, Noble is a case. He is a big baby and a love bug now. 
but he was so frightened for so long because he literally watched his sister die three different, well, was tried to, his sister was tried three different ways to be killed in front of him. And um, he was next. And thankfully a woman um, happened to be there on a dog rescue call and she picked him up and asked how much was he and took him out of there. Um, he did not let her get close to him or touch him. There comes my Bambi. Um, for until he got to Hooves Marching for Mercy was the first time he took his first rub and his first belly rub. After that though, as you see, he laid down in advance. He likes belly rubs, he likes touching, he's learned that it's normal and okay and that he's safe to accept it. And this is his friend Bambi, <laughs> who's also part farm pig as well. And Bambi and his brother Pumba, he has a brother Pumba that is here, and they came, their mom got pregnant through a fence, is the only thing anybody can figure because she was a single pig and somebody walked out one day they didn't know she was pregnant and all the babies were dead but bambi and his brother pumba um, because she killed them by accident oh. she didn't know what she was doing and they had no idea so they saved them and so they called us and here comes gunther hi let me see if i can get to you let me see if i can get to you gunther's kind of a special fella he had the first four years of his life, he lived on a concrete pad with a pack of dogs with a dirt patch of probably a six by six dirt patch. There was no housing, no bedding, no hay, nothing like that. He was not fed pig food. He was tossed out the dog food like the dogs were and he had to fend for himself against animals that are predators and he is prey. Um, he was, when he first came to us, he was so underweight. Um, but he was also very, very feisty. He um, would fight us every chance he got, which I don't blame him. But he had to challenge us every, every turn and now he has turned into the sweetest, most lovable boy. He's the first one to greet people. He's one of the first to go down for belly rubs. He just, he's the most loving boy that there is. And um, he lived that way for four years. He's seven years old now. This is Charlotte right here that I'm petting. Um, that's black and white. Um, Charlotte had a rough beginning. She was in a home where she lived in a pen probably maybe eight foot by eight foot. She lived in her own filth. Um, she was beaten on a daily basis as well as fed beer. So she was, no, no ma'am. She was fat blind and was so severely obese that she could not see, she could hardly walk. Um, and all she could do was take these beatings every day. And somebody finally saw her and the plight that she was in and was able to beg and plead and move heaven and earth to get her out of there. And um, she brought her into her home and she brought in at the same time the guy back there with the mud on his butt, Hanky Panky. And we call him Hanky Panky because he was about two months old. She did not realize that a two month old pig and an adult female pig could get pregnant. And lo and behold, we had poor Charlotte get pregnant. Um, sadly, she lost all the litter but two. Um, Tootsie Roll, who's inside of there, um, is the littlest one. She is stayed with her mom and her dad, and they will stay here as permanent residents, especially with all that Charlotte um, went through. Um, that way, they just know nothing but love from, from this point out. And then we have Bam Bam in front of you. But Bam Bam came to us. He had been having problems in the home that he was in. Um, having, I guess, vicious outbursts is what they told us. Um, <laughs> we have never seen anything vicious from him. I think he was a dominant pig. But once, once we showed him who was dominant here, He's been nothing but the most loving, affectionate boy. Um, and he's fit in with this family of three so well. They've formed a little family unit of four. 
that are just inseparable. So this little group will live out their lives here at the sanctuary happily, um, living, this is their enclosure, this is their space. Um, and then they have grazing time just like everybody else. We have pastures where they graze and get grass and all that good stuff. And on days they don't graze, they get hay. So they're rather spoiled here. And we like it that way. And they have plenty of room to run. It goes all the way down there. So for four of them, there's plenty of space, which is important to me that they all have enough space. she'll come. Unfortunately they go to bed by like 5 30 mm -hmm. so we're cutting into to sleepy sleep time. Yeah yeah she did. There's Darlene. So Darlene is the gray one. She's one of the girls from Texas. Mm -hmm. She's you can tell she's older. She's probably at least 13 and she's been she's seen the war. So what is the the oldest uh animal you have here? The oldest pig? The oldest pig we have is Darlene. Okay. The gray one. She's the oldest one. Okay. So. And there comes sleepy boy Alec. <laughs> His mom um, had MS and became bedridden and so he became very angry in the home because he couldn't get to his mom. That's right. how strong the bond was. When he came here, he didn't eat or drink for almost four days. It was we were having to force. You do see this, the same sort of yes, behavior yes, he in was pigs devastated. as you do small children. Yeah, he was devastated. He rocked and cried and and even mouthed or, or mimicked the word and sound of mama and just cried. It really? Was four days of we wanted earplugs just because we didn't know what else to do for him. Now you mentioned and a few minutes. And then he met Tina, one of our other pigs that came at the same time as he did from mm -hmm. a court case. And the two of them met, and they have been inseparable ever since, and they have helped each other get through their transition. Have you, um, have you saw pigs develop some sort of human-type language? So they can say mama. Right. They say mama really well. Um, Moon Pie down there, our little white boy who's singled out right there. Right. Um, Near Gunther, he says, Mama, and you can hear him clear across this whole farm anytime he's deciding to scream. He won't let me touch him, but he'll scream Mama real clear and real Because well. I've known uh, goats, cattle, pigs, uh, and sheep, if they're around humans a lot, they will pick up certain words. Words, exactly. And pigs know. are very much mimickers. Right. Pigs are mimickers. That's it. Very much so. Would you like a belly rub? This is Anna Mae, and I'm not going to rub her too much, but she came here from Tennessee, um, a wonderful patient lady, um, spent over three hours trying to work with getting her in her uh, car and get her to come to her. Um, she had no ears at the time. Um, so we really do not know what happened to them. She could have been dog attacked. Um, the cuts were very straight, so there's speculation from the vet of whether somebody did it. Um, or whether they finished off what maybe there was a dog attack and they thought they were trying to do... I try to give people some benefits of the doubt. Maybe they thought they were trying to do something, but she was extremely traumatized when she came to us. She would not let a person touch her. She would not let, um, she would not go into a house or an enclosure of any kind. Every time we'd try to put a tarp over her and rain, it took the room that she would move. Um, it took three months before she felt secure enough to go under anything or anything to, to go to sleep, um, which was just nerve wracking for all of us because she would go through storms and sleep outside and it just broke our hearts. But now she's one of the first to come out and greet. She gets belly rubs. She loves belly rubs. She's, she loves the mud. The mud is her favorite thing. Um, but she's a fan favorite here at the sanctuary. This is 
Susanna. She came to us from Animal Control. She was found in a field somewhere. That's all the story we have on her, except for that when she came to us, she was so overweight, she, her feet barely touched the ground. Her belly was the only thing that touched the ground. Um, so unfortunately, she's our only one that is not spayed because as she, unfortunately she was growing and as she's grown, while she has slimmed out, she has not been at a safe weight to spay her. So she is the only one at our location unspayed. Unfortunately, it's very important to get them spayed and neutered when they're very, very young and very small, especially for a female because of how much fat the females have, especially. So she unfortunately hasn't been able to be spayed, but she's a fan favorite. She loves belly rub and she's got the best comb over there ever was. She's got the best mohawk. And she's one of our sweetest girls. Okay, so Wilma came to us. We got a phone call about a pig that had been wandering the neighborhood and could we help? Well, somebody said they could foster it. So we went to check her out and see the foster home and, and see, but unfortunately it was not a safe location for her. The, um, there was nowhere, there was no fencing, there was no way to keep her in over there. So it was not a safe place for her. So I picked her up. Um, they thought she had been pregnant. She was that overweight at the time. Um, I picked her up and put her in the back seat of the car thinking, okay, I can drive with this pig for 55 miles in the back seat of the car, no problem. So I put my arm and the armrest up so that I could kind of keep her from trying to come towards the front of the seat. Well, she did just that while I was driving and dislocated my shoulder. And I drove home with a pig resting on my arm with a dislocated shoulder and both of us crying going, just get me home, just get me home. And her looking at me like, lady, don't you move my head. It's staying on your arm. Um, when we got her to the vets, she had been shot. Um, she glowed with uh, pellets. Um, so we do not know what she had happened to her, but she was only nine months at the time. and. The shots were all healed. She was all healed up from being shot. So she'd had a rough start. So sometimes she likes to bite to begin with, but really what she wants is a belly rub. So we always tell her no, and then she lays down for her belly rub. You guys can all come in the barn. And those are our chickens, our special girls. We've got Ackley, Henrietta, Georgina, and Frickles is the boy. And there are our babies. He's like oh. right over here. Yeah. Okay. Sadly, we lost his brother, Sunshine. Um, oh, no. He was much smaller, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, his spine was fused together. Yeah. And we didn't know this. Um, and he startled one day and he jumped and his back legs went out and he literally then was on the ground squealing and couldn't move his back end. We rushed him to the vets, hoping it was just swelling of the spine. We tried everything. I evacuated his bowels every day. We ended up doing a surgery to put a catheter in, which was a three or four hour surgery so that we could drain the bladder. Um, he slept beside our bed. Um, we tried for five days until he went septic and um, passed away. Unfortunately, Moon Pie never recovered. He never recovered from the loss of his brother. He's never fully trusted anybody since. Mama, yes I know. Mama, I know. Hi, buddy, I love you too. I'm glad you wanted to be on film. No, he, can, he can say it better than most. He just likes to be talked to. He likes to be counted in as part of the group. Just like some people don't like to be touched, he doesn't like to be touched. Darlene is not a big toucher. You know, we try to respect their boundaries that they give to us. Sometimes 
just because we may want to touch and love on them, just like with a person, sometimes they don't want to be touched and loved on. They just want to be allowed to be and exist and be safe. And so we try to provide that too and just look at what their individual needs are. Hi, buddies. Hi, buddies. Hi, babies. Hi, babies. Hi, big boys. Hi, big boys. Hi, big babies. Oh, this is Simon and Garfunkel. Um, they came to us from Animal Control. Um, they were two farm pigs just found wandering the street. And the Animal Control didn't know a lot about pigs, so they just put the babies together. Um, thankfully, it worked out. Um, they bonded so much that when we had to separate them for a week because they came in on different days, so they, uh, Garfunkel had to stay an extra week. When we reunited them, the hugs, and the noises that they made, all of us were in tears at the emotional reconnection that they had because they were that 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 bonded. So they can never, they are up for adoption, but they can never be adopted out alone. They would have to go together. So that would take a very special person. Um, however, we deliver. <laughs> um, but otherwise, they'll live out their life here very happily until old age and get to graze on green pastures, wallow in mud, and try to dig up everything they can, which is what they do. And they like their belly rubs. They like a lot of belly rubs. They, they, they like a lot of attention. Okay, this is Willie, and he may not stay up very long. Um, he likes to lay down really quick. Um, but he is kind of a special boy. He is my service animal. Willie and I um, have a very special bond, and Willie came to us from a wonderful home, and the dog who raised him unfortunately attacked him. And so his mom placed him with us, and his mom and his grandparents are still very active in his life. Um, they take a huge role in his life here at the sanctuary. Um, Willie, come here. Can you come here? He says, I'm going to eat grass. Okay, so Willie um, got, I was, when I was on hospice um, about two years ago, I was asked to be in a book called Vets and Pets. And it's um, a wonderful book um, written by two wonderful authors. Um, but Barbara Bush wrote the foreword for the book Vets and Pets, and she wanted to meet Willie the pig. And so, um, him being my service animal, we went up with a group of veterans um, and with our service animals, and we met Barbara and George Bush at their home in Kennebunkport, Maine. Um, Willie had a great time. He got to uh, be petted by Barbara and George Bush. Um, it was. Uh, the book was one of the last projects that Barbara worked on, one of the last big projects I know that she worked on, um, and it was just a real privilege to get to get up there and meet them and to be recognized for what we're doing here and for what we do, um, and for Willie to get recognized by them for what he does for me. So he's a pretty special guy. He does have congestive heart failure, so um, he and I kind of bond together. When we have a bad day, sometimes we have a bad day together, and we just kind of help each other through the bad days. Look up. That gray beard of his is what I love. It's just one-sided. Yeah. Well, David and Mandy, we've had some interesting stories today. And I really appreciate hearing each and every one of them. Well, you know, it was kind of sad hearing each and every one of them, but I think there's stories that need to be told because I don't think people know how cruel farm animals are actually treated. Yeah. Some people go, oh, yeah, I know, they're killed for food and so on and so on, but there's a lot more to it than there's that. There's a lot of cruelty that goes on to that treatment. As there's well. a lot. Um, yeah, even, even if they are really being raised as farm animals, the, the animals there's still a lot of cruelty going on. Mm -hmm. But it's these... these they're one, not seen these, as, as right. a creature, as a sentient right. being. Right. They're seen as a piece of property right. to be exactly. kicked around or beat right. up. And, and especially the, the one-off animal, the one pig who has to survive with the dogs. Right. The, the, the pigs that are uh, kept and used for for training dogs to hunt. Right. The list goes on. Or somebody oh, who just right. wants to abuse the animal, right? Well, I mean, I've even seen one single burrow, a donkey, in the middle of a field of cows. I mean, and that's 
not fair on the donkey for many yeah, reasons, exactly. you know. They don't get to be a donkey. Right. right. Yeah. There's, there's, I love that our chickens here get to be chickens. They get to get out, they get to be chickens. Our pigs get to get out, they get to be pigs. Right. Our farm pig boys that are full farm pig, they love to dig. They get to dig all they want. They get to uproot anything they want and they get to be <laughs> boys. Right. Um, and they get to wallow in the mud, they get to play in the water, we have pools for them. So we have some that don't like mud, they rather are dainty and they like the water better than mud. All right. um, but, and we have a horse that is blind that he just gets to be a horse. He um, used to be ridden all the time um, mm -hmm. before he went blind and even when he was blind he's still able to be ridden. Um, but he just wants to be. He, he likes to be walked around. Um, he likes to be groomed. He likes to well, be like, given lots like of attention. It's like any other human. But or he just wants to meander his field all day and do what he does. Well, that's the thing. Everybody, every animal, just wants to live a life and be <laughs> left alone to have the freedom to live, to that, live life. that life. And what you're doing here is giving them that freedom. We're trying. We're trying. We try to make it as <laughs> natural an environment for them as possible. We really do. Well, I wish you a huge, enormous amount of success in obtaining the property, Thank your you. impending fundraiser that you're planning now. And I hope that people watching this show will help, aid, and assist you uh, financially or with their own personal labors as much and as often as they can. And I'll say one last time in closing that people like you and David are true, genuine people that you don't find commonly throughout the world any longer. And it's been a very good benefit and pleasure to me knowing both of you, reading your daily posts on Facebook, and seeing your adventures with your animals. I mean, it means a lot to me, and I think it'll mean a lot to everybody. And so, you know, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, David. You. Thank you for helping us get the message out. Yeah, thank you and, for helping us get the message And uh, just thanks for being on our show today. Thank As we depart David and Mandy Tidwell, here at their Hooves Marching for Mercy Sanctuary, I find myself truly inspired by their genuine and innate compassion toward animals that are mainly ignored by the mainstream these days. Their love for the humane and the humanitarian is abundant throughout each and everything they endeavor to achieve. I wish more people on this earth would have a sincere love for their fellow creature, just as David and Mandy do. <laughs>